All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect right here, right now with the West Coast's finest. We got Mr. CR live on the line. How are you doing this evening? Yes, yes, sir. I'm in a place to be, and I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good, man. I'm chilling, man, like a motherfucker. Hey, man, you already know what to do. I got to ask, man, what is everything like on the West Coast right now, man? Like, not not just COVID-wise, but weather, man. You know what I mean? I'm jealous. You got the palm trees where you're at. Hey, shit, Today is like eighty something degrees. Ooh, damn man, we, we got to. Sw- I'm out here in Canada, man. You know what? She's she's a tit bit nipply down here. Oh damn, that sucks for y'all because it's, it's it's cool out here. <laughs> hey man, you know so cool I, I'm Canadian, right now. man. You know what I mean? I'm Canadian, so at the end of the day, man, I I should be used to it by now after doing twenty seven years of the crap. But you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I got a homegirl out there. Right? She be dancing and shit like that. I got a homegirl out there. And one night, just like some um, some months back, she was driving home and it was like a ice storm or some type of shit like that. And she had to uh, pull over and sleep in some bullshit ass shit on the side of the road because the road was so too fucked up for her to drive all the way back. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah, the, the, that's Canadian weather for you, man. It's unpredictable. But I got to ask you, right. man, I want to take you back to the beginning of your amazing career, bro, because you did some phenomenal stuff, and we're going to get to that. But I want to know from the beginning, man, like, what actually sparked and inspired Mr. CR to get into the music industry initially? I uh, believe that, you know, uh, 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 well, aside from the, uh, well, basically, um, years ago, man, I was, uh, I was, I had a little clock radio. I tell the story all the time, man. I had a little clock radio, and I just clicked it on the AM station right there, you know what I mean? And I turned it all the way to the dial all the way to the right. And as I turned the dial all the way to the right, I bunk and ran across the, uh, I could hear somebody, it was a guy saying, uh, he was saying this lyrics and something, something like this. He's like, I ain't the one. The one that get played like a poop, but see him from the streets. So I know what stuff about the silly game that's ran by the women. Cause yo, I can see the devil. But anyway, I stumbled upon that as I was playing with the radio. I had to be like 12, 11 or 12 or something like that. You know what I mean? And it come to find out when I heard that, I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do. And as you know what I'm saying, as I got familiar with hip hop, I realized that that guy I was listening to on that radio station was Ice. Cube, NWA. Yeah, man. I'm gonna say NWA most definitely has that has that effect on a lot of individuals, man. So you're not the only one for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, man, I want to take you back, man, as well, because I read as well that one of your first performances was actually at the Good Life Cafe. I was wondering, man, what was that experience like from what you remember, and of course, how did that opportunity come to be for you? Okay, well, uh, well the first. First time I went there, it wasn't really nobody there, but the first time I uh, um, performed there, it was pretty cool, you know what I mean? Especially considering the fact that before you get up, before you get on stage and you can see the people getting booed and some people getting booed, so for us to go up there and do a job and the people actually liked it, that shit was a good feeling. I got, we got put up on a good like cafe because one day me and my crew was on a, uh, riding a bus one day, we was in the back of the bus rhyming or whatever, and the guy just, uh, I guess he was ear hustling or whatever, so he just interrupted the conversation and was like, bruh. And you think you can rap, and you really think you're a rapper, they need to go to the good life. Because every Thursday night, everybody that thinks all the rappers in the LA that think they can rap, be right there. So if you think you can rap, you need to take your ass down there and make that shit happen. And so sure enough, that's exactly what we did. And I gotta say, man, that sounds like it actually was a good turnout for one of your first performances, man. Like, was that the only time you ever had the opportunity to actually perform at the Good Life Calf? <laughs> Uh, I believe we had, we performed a couple of times, and then it, get to, it got to a point where uh, um, certain cats from the good like uh, 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 that, that was like top tier MCs or high level MCs for, in, in that genre took us under their wing. You know what I mean? Because of, you know they seemed potential with us, and they like to get out there, whatever. They started like low key training us. These are guys, you know what I mean? Guys that's, uh, that was like uh, known as Good Life Project Blow Legends and shit. And also, man, in the early 90s, you were actually a member of the East Side Bastards. I was wondering if you could tell us a story behind the formation of that group. But how did you meet the other members? Well, one of them is my brother, and then the other one was uh, a guy that, uh, he, he, he was at the Good Life as well. He was a youngster, but he was at the Good Life as well. But we also went to junior high school with this dude. And being the fact that we was the youngest, you know what I mean, uh, uh, a couple of was like, you know what, y'all must have just be a group. They suggested that, and then from that suggestion and on board, that's what it was. And I gotta say, man, are you guys still doing your thing today, or like, or like, obviously throughout the years, did you guys kind of part ways? Yeah, well, um, we kind of parted ways because you know, um, 
I'm the last remaining a member of that crew that's still that's still uh, that's, um, going, that's still you know recording all that. You know, my, uh, my brother, you know, he was a member. He uh, you know, turned to uh, religion or whatever, and he's doing that. And then the other homie, he uh, he just gave up all together cause, because you know he robbed the bank or some shit like that, and he been in jail for like the last twenty, thirty years. Oh damn, man! I I gotta say, man, I'm sorry to hear about that. Hopefully, he gets out at some point soon, man, because that's been a that's a long <laughs> time to be locked up for a while. <laughs> long ass. Yeah, he's been in a long ass time, so he should be coming home soon. But I mean, we all grown it. We grown now, you know. Life didn't happen, and you know, certain situations that came up and shit like that. So I don't know what he gonna be doing or how he gonna feel about me when he get out. But you know, I hope, I hope nothing. I wish nothing but luck to him. Shit, I ain't seen her for this guy in like years. And also, man, your single VSOP was actually in the major motion picture Soul Plane, starring Snoop Dogg and the late great John Witherspoon. I was wondering, man, how did you? land that song on that amazing soundtrack okay well you know one day i was uh standing in front of my gate smoking a cigarette and one of the homies happened to be driving by when this dude drives by he pulls over and he sees me he's like look man we got this mother it's a movie coming out but Snoop Dogg, uh, met the man yeah 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 whatever <laughs> gave him the cd when i gave him the cd he did a cd to uh 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 A.C. Long, a guy named A.C. Long. A.C. Long gives the CD to a guy named Peter Bittenbender. Peter Bittenbender gives the CD to MGM. And then that's how that shit got done like that. Hey, man, it sounds like your CD definitely got passed around, man, but it got passed around to the right people, man. That right there sounds like fate waiting to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's how that happened, man. It, 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 it turned up. And I gotta ask, man, it's pertaining to that soundtrack. Like, how many units of that soundtrack sell? Did it go gold or platinum at all? Uh, that I don't know, but I, I don't even I don't even know how the movie really did. You know, what I mean, we didn't really see too much, you know, uh, you know, uh, big poop blah, 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 blah behind it being on there. You know what I mean? But uh, so you know, so I, I couldn't really tell you. You know, what I mean, I don't know if that movie was. A, I don't think that was a, like a blockbuster movie. I mean, it was a major motion picture, but still going on. But I don't know exactly how it did in the theaters. I don't know. If, I don't really recall it doing that. Well, it'll be some kind of like a blockbuster film, but hey, it was a big uh, accomplishment for me, so fuck it, I don't I ain't tripping. And also, man, in December 2012, so jumping ahead in the timeline a little bit, you dropped the album uh, Shit Talking, man. I gotta ask you, what's the story behind that phenomenal album? And of course, is it still out there today to, to be purchased or streamed? Um, I believe it's still out there. I still believe it's still out there. You know, that, that project was put together by a guy named uh, the, um, Tree Post. You know what I mean? He was a uh, guy, he had the Tree Post Collective or whatever, my guy Steve Young or whatever. So, you know, he, uh, I forgot how I met him, but, you know, he took a liking to me when he see me, he met me, he heard Scoop Tracks, and then we just linked up, put that shit together, and do that shit on out there to see what it does. And I gotta say, man, that that album is absolutely phenomenal, man. I, I listened to a few older of older joints out on YouTube, man. And I gotta say, man, I, I love I love your hip hop style, man. Most definitely one of the top MCs out on the West Coast. Oh, good looking at you got. If you love that, you gotta check out my new shit. My so, I got that new shit called Solar Power Nigga. Get that. That's that's the shit. That's how I just dropped that. Solar Power Nigga. That's the name of the title. That shit is dope. I'm getting rave reviews on that right now too. And actually, when we're on the topic of that, man, that was actually one of the last questions I had, but I figured since we're talking about it now, might as well slide that in, man. I was wondering, man, for the individuals that haven't had the opportunity to check out Solar Powered, wh where can they actually snag themselves a copy? And of course, man, what can they expect when they do actually slide that into their CD? Or, uh, since it's 2021, plug their phone into their computer? Yeah, yeah, you can find it. It's on all digital platforms right now. But, uh... The, uh, uh, the fastest way to find it, I know it's on Bandcamp for sure. If it's on uh, Amazon, iTunes, Apple, it's on all that shit. But, uh, yes, yeah, it's on, uh, uh, it's on all, all social media, uh, social digital distribution uh, websites. But when you, what you can find out when you hit, as soon as you put that shit on, it's like a movie. You watch, It's like you're listening. It's an audio movie. As soon as you put that shit in, it's going to take you once to strap it in and keep up and put your uh, hard hat on it and your helmet on and your, you need pads and elbow pads because it's going to take you on a ride. You see what I'm saying? And also... A, a fast and furious ass ride. Uh, audio, uh, but, you know, in an audio sense. It's a dope project. I got slappers on there. You know what I mean? It's a real dope project. I listen to that shit every day. You know what I mean? You know, I'm a, I'm a, 
my own fan, but you know, sometimes I'm real hard on myself when I, with this music shit. But this one, I just, it, it, it's 10 songs and it, it, the shit will go by so fast, you wouldn't even realize it was just that. It was just 10 songs. You're going to be like, that's it? That's how hard this shit is, bro. And also, as well, I actually read that you had the opportunity to perform uh, alongside Nipsey Hustle, man. I, I gotta ask you, what was it like performing with Nipsey? And did you have the opportunity to meet him as well before, before or after your performance? Well, I'm saying, see, but, um, see, I was dealing with um, cats that was already dealing with him before he was who, who y'all knew him to be. You know what I mean? So that's how I actually met him or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, he was he wasn't who y'all knew him to be yet. He was just becoming that that guy. You know what I mean? So that's how my experience of being around him. I wasn't around him like every day, 24/7, and like that. But I'm, I've been around him like day four or five times and watching. And each time that I uh, was around him. He was moving higher and higher and higher up until he became the person that you guys know him to be as. Yeah. And I just got to say, rest in paradise to the late, great Nipsey Hussle, man. Gone, but most definitely never forgotten. Yes, sir. But I got to ask you, man, other than Solar Powered, what is next for the legendary Mr. CR? Uh, man, I'm constantly working, constantly working, and all that type of shit. But, you know, I just recently released... Uh, I just recently released that show power joint, so man, you need to man, y'all need to check that out, man. That's a classic. I guarantee you, you're not gonna regret it. That's a total classic. I also got like a lot of it's a lot of interviews. You know, I've you know I've been into my gang. You know, a lot of people know about my gang story, all that type of shit. So it's a lot of people that are like me these these uh, uh, um, social media platforms that that uh, that focus on gang shit. A lot of these dudes they um, interviewing me because they want to hear my side of the, they want to hear my story. Uh, uh, being betrayed by the, uh, the gang I was from or whatever, you know what I mean? So I got a lot of that shit going on, you know what I mean? But I'm directing that type, particular type of crowd to my music, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, I ain't so, so long you can talk about the same ass gang bullshit, you know what I mean? So when I'm on these some new type of sites, I try to direct these dudes to my music. But a lot of these kids, them cats, they don't even know I, I, I do music, they just thought I was a stupid ass gang banger or something, you know what I mean? And then when they actually hear my music, they be like, God damn it, this dude is dope. Our nigga out now. And I want to say as well, man, you know what I mean? The way I do my interviews, man, at the end of the day, I, I don't I don't really care if you're in a gang or you're not or what what, what kind of what, what you do in your private life, man. I care about the music and what people bring to the table musically, man. So at the end of the day, you're a talented artist, man. You want to be in a gang, be in a gang, man. But at the end of the day, you're a dope fucking MC. So that's what I want to talk about. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. But also, Mr. Cr, man, directly after this interview, bro, I'm actually going to be spinning one one of my favorite one of my favorite joints from you, man, called "Nowhere to Go." And for the listeners that haven't had the opportunity to check out your song, whether it's on your streaming platforms or on Outlaw Radio FM, when they hear this joint, what can they expect from "Nowhere to Go"? Well, basically, it's a um, it's basically a song about uh, you know, basically um, the typical day in Southern California, you know, when you ain't got nothing planned. You know, you got the cool car out there, you know, you, got the, you want to find something to get into, you know, the weather's looking nice, you know what I mean, and it's just a good day, you know, you just jump in whip and you ride around to you and try to find something to get into, you know what I mean, that's basically what the song's about, you know, that's just like some California, that's like some California LA type shit, you know what I mean, it's like you book, you dip it through traffic, but nowhere specific to go until you find that destination, but you just know you're going, and that's what you're going to get, you're going to basically hear that, oh, that's what that's basically what the song is about, it's a dope song. And also, man, this is the time in the interview quickly that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And also, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything Mr. CR if they're not already doing so. Okay, yeah, I would like to give a shout-out to everybody that's supporting my music out there. If there's anybody in Canada that's listening to my shit, uh, I'd like to give a shout-out to y'all, man, because if it ain't... If it ain't for y'all, if it's not if it not for y'all, I wouldn't be who I am. So I like to give a shout to any and everybody that's listening to my shit and any and everybody that's that's telling people about me that don't know about me. You know what I mean? And, uh um shit man, and, uh Yeah, you can find me on social media, uh, on all social media platforms as Mr. C R, but you gotta spell it out. It's M I S T E O R C R. Not M R dot C R. No, you gotta spell that shit out. M I S T E R C R. That's M I S T E R C R on all social media platforms. And also, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you get solar powered 
Because if you don't, either you get it or you most definitely will regret it. Yeah, it's a really dope project, man. But I got to say, Mr. CR, thank you so much, man, for just taking a little bit of your time this evening and coming on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM. It was an honor and most definitely a privilege, brother, and I hope down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Yes, sir. You, I'm sure you always hit me up, bro. Hey, man, same goes for you. You need anything, man. Don't hesitate to re reach out, man. We got you down here in Canada. All right, for sure. I'm going to be coming out there soon, too, whenever this goes, whenever they start chipping on this goes with shit. Hey, man, sounds good. Let me know where you're at, man. I most definitely will purchase some tickets, man, because I know artists like yourself, you miss performing, and fans like me, I miss I miss a concert, bro. I actually fucking forget what it feels like. So I, I, I need so a dope MC like you to remind me how good a concert really feels. For sure, for sure, for sure. Hey, man, most definitely, Mr. CR. Thank you so much, brother, and have yourself a wonderful night. All right, too. Thanks for having me, man. Y'all stay up, man. Hey, most definitely. You're most certainly welcome, man. Bye, babe.